need shampoo, please. From the mid-60s, London society was run by hairdressers. They were the power in the land. I don't know how it happened, but if you wanted theatre tickets, if you wanted to meet anyone, if you wanted to go anywhere, you asked your hairdresser. Now, I remember sitting in Vidal Sassoon, where everyone was being given a nice little plain fringe and a bit of straight hair to there, that's all. We were sitting there waiting for this transformation to take place. And there were women there crying. You know, very rich women, titled women, would be sitting there with wet hair saying, but I've been here for four hours and I have a dinner party to host tonight. And they say, sorry, darling. They treated us appallingly. It was great fun, actually. Working for Vidal Sassoon in the 60s and 70s was such a ride you felt that if you ever fell off, you could never get back on again. This is a story of some of those people who propelled the starship called Sassoon's and what they did to change culture. The decade took off and the cry was, try anything. People were making it up as they went along. For them, this was the future and they were living it now. It's almost pure art the way hairdressers like Vidal Sassoon produce new styles. He, of course, is a world leader in this field. I'd met Vidal Sassoon and adored Vidal, and he'd cut my hair into the famous five points, is it? Um, which I just, just loved, and he cut the hair of most of the models that worked for me. Uh, and, and this was a complete breakthrough and another great sort of freedom-making thing because you then just washed it. Vidal Sassoon was so incredibly creative. I mean, I think people have forgotten how remarkably creative he was and, and he, in turn, um, encouraged and nurtured other hairdressers who, who, who went on to become um, influential. So models, photographers, hairdressers, big big part of it. The Bob Vidal created for Nancy Kwan inspired him and his hair cutters to produce a multitude of geometric designs that complemented the clothes and music of the 60s. These styles were fresh, original and daring, reflecting the optimism of London at the time. In 1965, Gerard Austin joins Vidal Sassoon, bringing with him not just his 44 Sloan Street Salon, but some very groundbreaking modernist innovations which become the look of the company. This Bond Street reception was built off-site and was transported in on a Sunday while the salon was closed. The Metropolitan Police stopped all traffic while the fiberglass pod was being installed. By Monday morning, the salon was up and running. The design for the barbershops looked as if they had been borrowed from the plans of a nuclear submarine, whereas the stylus cutting bays could have been pulled straight out of a bank vault. It was put to Vidal. They had the V in the hair, but what about the S? There was only one thing to do. Vidal and Gerard gave the two newly created art directors and a technician the task of coming up with a daring concept for hair. Roger Thompson, Christopher Brooker and Annie Humphreys went to work at the Sassoon Grosvenor House Salon one Friday night 
and finally on Sunday morning produced a stunning result. With Roger and Christopher working now exclusively on the artistic direction of the company, the progression from geometrics to lay at work opened up new horizons. The decade ended with the Isadoras. This was the first time shape had been specifically cut into long hair. Isadora presented an opportunity for long hair to be contemporary, different, and fashionable. Christopher's Bow Baker Veil haircut incorporated for the first time short layers with long hair. The look merged into what was known in London as the Laird Isadora, or across the Atlantic as the Shag, a cut that was worn by almost every rock band at the time. Gerard convinced Vidal the need for a school had become obvious as the company expanded and required highly trained operators to staff the salons. Robert Adele was chosen to set up the school in Knightsbridge. Under the direction of John Santilli and Caroline Haynes, an academy soon followed. This taught advanced work including colouring and perming to thousands of hairdressers from around the globe. In 1972, Daryl Benson cut the hair off the side of the face at Sassoon's Bond Street Salon. This haircut was commercially very popular and eventually evolved into Christopher's iconic firefly. Firefly itself triggered numerous variations, some of which became influential in their own right. In 1974, Daryl was a senior artistic director for Fidel Sassoon. One of Daryl's passions was the love and study of classical art. One day, a Leonardo da Vinci painting caught his eye. The Virgin of the Rocks, and notably, the angel on the right-hand side of the work. This inspired Daryl. He turned the idea into an intriguing design which required an innovative form of perming created by Alison Benson called Stack Perming. From that idea came the beautiful study, Dark Lady.
The most innovative and prolific creator for Fidel Sassoon was Christopher Brooker. His dynamic contribution ranged from crisp edge to postmodern geometrics, slicked down nightclub hair to romantic ethereal expressionism, and casual thatched bobs. My favourite um, haircut of all time um, has to be the brush. I think that there's so many looks that are coming from it and it was so far ahead of its time. It was created because of a mistake, because my model's hair had been ruined. Um, I, but, you know, I used certain tricks to actually to create the picture as well, which people don't know about. There were no products to make the hair stand up like that, you know, so I used candle wax. You know, so I use candle wax. Because you're using more styling glasses, to get your hair really clean and sexy. But now you can, with my new Vida Alpha Soon Advanced Style on Formula. The shampoo cleanses away styling blowdown. The conditioning finishing rinse leaves your hair radiant. New Advanced Talon Formula. But if you don't look good, we don't look good. By 1976, war had broken out in the streets of London, but this time, it was culture. Punk had arrived with such ferocity that caught many by surprise, but some as soon as had their eyes wide open and their ears close to the ground. They had been waiting for this opportunity to have a voice. A controversy erupted as soon as, and the main contention was texture. Hair had become highly energised. It appeared irreverent, undisciplined, much like the new music and unstructured ripped clothing. Tracks and shapes were carved down into the scalp, hairlines sculpted back, colours painted on with paintbrushes or sometimes fingers. It was controversial, new and exciting. This time it was a new generation who were calling the shots. It was their turn and they were saying, move over. London Calling by The Clash is an iconic song that really represents a, a, a very, I think, a very important time really in hair. Uh, punk uh, leading through to the New Romantics really was a revolution that changed the way hairdressing was done. I think that it was as big as the revolution that Vidal gave when he really released women from rollers and introduced blow drying. Well. This uh, era was the time when 
all of the techniques that most people take for granted today, uh, such as texturizing, slicing, breaking hair up, um, creating almost dimensions in the hair with a pair of scissors, and even coloring techniques of using your fingers, creating roots in the hair, uh, brushing bleach onto it, flying colors, simple, simple, simple things, which are really almost a bedrock of our industry, were all created um, in the staff training department of Vidal Sassoon. There were two guys there, uh, Flint Wincott and Daryl Benson, and I was the kid, you know, I just passed my exams and for some reason got thrown in with these two. And there were these 30 people, uh, all youngsters aged 17 to 19, who simply were there as this imaginarian think tank that was just doing stuff. We ended up, we had people coming in from all across the globe to come and see what these guys were doing because it really was a revolution that was taking place. And um, London was, as ever, the centre of the universe for hairdressing. One Sunday afternoon on a hill in the country outside London, Flint and Peggy sat down and wrote a manual that documented the new techniques that were happening in hair in 1977. From that came the first Vidal Sassoon advanced training program. This program shed light on all strange new phrases and terminology being used around the emerging hair direction. At the same time, Daryl and Flint were formulating the Sassoon Basic Cutting Hair Manual. This illustrated guide explained in detail the fundamental knowledge behind the Sassoon philosophy. The officially released haircuts endorsed by head office were viewed by many as dull and disappointing, and out of touch with the changing zeitgeist of London. Meanwhile, hiding out of sight away from head office and behind closed doors, ideas were being attempted and executed in the hope of producing a line that could be judged as commercial. We did stuff like turning our scissors down into the shapes chopping and chipping at their very structure, sometimes using one blade as a razor. New color techniques and perming were at play. Utilizing the technical skills of Annie Humphreys, the emerging results were provocative. At first the hair fought back, but soon yielded to the new freedom. I would sometimes hold my breath when some of my young pupils would go to town on a very eager and willing punk girl. The energy coming from these kids was amazing. They loved this work. It's what they wanted, I guess. They knew it was theirs. You don't look good. We don't look good. You don't look good. We don't look good. Hairdressers from all over the world came to Sassoon schools to do hair they had never done before or dream they would never do. This was London, and this is what London does.
crew of Adele's geometric haircuts in the 60s had taken a life of its own. It was unstoppable and gave each generation permission to express their own voice in their own way, for their own time. All with joy, belief and fervour, and sometimes death. Will you sweep up afterwards?